All right, well, let's all gather about and start the celebration here of the 225th anniversary of Moses Cleveland's arrival on the banks of the Cuyahoga and the founding of the city of Cleveland, which was pretty small in those days. Uh, <laughs> he uh, thought that maybe the city someday would grow as big as Old Wyndham, which at that time was a pretty small little Connecticut town. So I think his uh, expectations were uh, fulfilled. So uh, we're going to have a presenting of the colors here by the Moses Cleveland, I'm sorry, the Western Reserve Society Archibald Willard Color Guard of the Sons of the American Revolution, uh, Lee McBride and Galen Schwab. Thank you. Color Guard, Dan X. Forward, Mark. Let us pray. <laughs> oh God, as we gather here this day to celebrate the 225th anniversary of the founding of our city, we pray, we pray that we may always think without confusion clearly, act from honest motives purely, love our fellow man sincerely, trust in thee and heaven securely. In thy holy name we pray. Lord, behold our society of people here gathered. We thank thee for this special occasion, for the love that unites us, for the peace accorded us this day, for the hope with which we expect the morrow, for the health, the work, and the bright skies that make our lives delightful. For our friends in all parts of the earth and our opportunities to serve. Amen. Thank you, John. We are now going to have a laying of the wreath by uh, a descendant of Moses Cleveland, uh, Maria Turner, and her son Joey. The other wreath is from the Sons of the American Revolution that's up there already.
Thank you, Mary and Joey. Uh, we are now going to have a presentation of proclamation and resolution uh, by Council President Kevin Kelly. Thank you. Thank you, Bill, and good morning to everybody. We are here on the 25th, the 225th anniversary of the founding of our great city. And 225 years ago, when Moses Cleveland and the Connecticut Land Company happened upon the shores of the Cuyahoga River, this was a forested community and they didn't really know what their investment was gonna bring. And quite frankly, they, since Moses Cleveland left so quickly, maybe they thought it wasn't a great investment. When they divided up those first lots and they didn't sell for $50, which as our Department of Community Development, you know, that's what we sell land bank lots for, a little bit less than that. Um, it might not have been seen as a great investment, but what a great investment in, hum in, in people and humanity this city has been. This started our rich history. This started the Cleveland that we know today from the three original settlers through the 50-some, through the 900,000 to where we are today. And all along the way, Cleveland has led Cleveland has led in arts, in architecture, in, 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 in music, in culture. Cleveland has become a great city, and I think if Moses Cleveland had stayed and taken a look, or if he's looking down upon us to now, now he'd be proud of the city that we have built in his honor. And when we have these occasions, we certainly look back to the past and look at our rich history, but we also need to take this opportunity on this 225th year anniversary and look to our future and look to what are the next 225 years gonna bring. I believe we've got a great future. I believe we can look back to the past 225 years and really recognize that. So it's a great honor to be here to present these, these resolutions. And I wanna start with the Early Settlers Association. History is extremely important. And history can be forgotten, except for those people that do the hard work to make sure that we are preserving history, make sure that we are celebrating our history, make sure that we have history to look back on and that our kids can look back on and our grandkids. This is not easy work. This is not something that just happens. It happens through the commitment of committed people that care about their community. So uh, from Cleveland City Council, I wanna start by presenting Bill Barrow with our resolution of recognition Whereas the members of Cleveland City Council, as well as the citizens of Cleveland, are sincerely pleased to recognize the Early Settlers Association of the Western Reserve for the preservation of traditions and heritage of the Western Reserve, resulting in their annual celebration on July 22nd. It goes on, but you get the point. Cleveland City Council, your city, your citizens really appreciate the great work you do, Bill. So if I can present this to you. Thank you, Thank you very much. And we have, a second re we have a second resolution to present. And again, this is hard work. This does not just happen. And just a few people can't do it on their own. And every year they have a, a, an award, the Clay Henrick Memorial Award. And this year, this award is being given to Kathleen Crowther. Uh, I'm gonna read the first paragraph. Whereas the members of Cleveland City Council along with its citizens are proud and pleased to recognize Kathleen Crowther, Executive Director, President of the Cleveland Restoration Society, as she is honored with the prestigious 2021 Clay Henrick Memorial Award by the Early Settlers Association of the Western Reserve at the ceremony being held as part of Cleveland's 225th year birthday celebration on Public Square. But I will go on to say that Kathleen, as her title says, she is the, she is the president, I always get these wrong, Pres director and president of the Cleveland Restoration Society. Again, we have to preserve our history. We have to preserve our architecture. We have to make sure that we keep the great parts of Cleveland great. And again, it doesn't happen by accident. It happens by hard work. It happens by organizing. I know how tirelessly um, Kathleen works for the Cleveland Restoration Society. Um, just when I was getting re ready for today, she had to pull me aside about some funding issues we're having with the city, but uh, it's, all, it's all for a good cause. We, as the city of Cleveland, owe a debt of gratitude to Kathleen Crowther and the Cleveland Restoration Society for their role in preserving our history. So Kathleen, if you'd step up. Thank you all very much, and thank you for everybody who loves the city and works to preserve our history. Thank you, Bill. Thank you. 
I believe we also have a proclamation, proclamation from the mayor. Uh, from the mayor's office. We have a second proclamation, and this is from the mayor of the city of Cleveland, Frank G. Jackson, in recognition of the Early Settlers Association celebration of Cleveland's 225th year birthday. On behalf of the citizens of Cleveland, I am honored to offer this proclamation in recognition of the Early Settlers Association of Cleveland's 225th year birthday. Again, from the mayor, from council, from your city, thank you for everything you do. All right, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Kelly. Much appreciate that uh, support from the city. Uh, this is the city's birthday, after all, so it's uh, something we should be celebrating. Uh, I should mention that there is a, I heard it on the radio this morning, that must be true, uh, the pat, uh, Blazing Paddles is happening on Saturday, connected somehow to the founding of the city. It's actually connected to the uh, Cuyahoga River fire. Uh, but they decided that was a little negative, so they moved the date to this Saturday to celebrate sort of what we're doing here, but on paddle boats. And con considering that Moses Cleveland Trody arrived up by boat, you know, not paddle boat, however, that would be a funny image, but, uh, you know, so that's something going on Saturday. A couple hundred people on kayaks and paddle boats and whatever. So we all celebrate this birthday in different ways. So speaking of the Clay Herrick Award, uh, we normally have that presented by Joe Herrick, Clay Herrick's daughter, who is not with us today because of the pandemic. So our vice president, uh, John Vaca, uh, himself a Herrick Award winner, uh, will be presenting the award to Kathleen Fargo. Thank you, Bill. As uh, Bill said, I'm standing in for Jill, who always began with a brief background of the Herrick Award. Her father was Clay Herrick, one of the great promoters of Cleveland history. He started the Herrick Memorial Award in 1981 in honor of his late wife, Ruth. First recipient was George Voinovich. Clay died in 1993, and his daughter, Jill, decided to continue the award in honor of both parents. Some of the year uh, recipients through the years were John Simperman, Cleveland's first Landmarks Commissioner, David Van Tassel, the uh, father of National History Day, Ray Shepherdson, savior of Playhouse Square, Dick Fagler, Cleveland Press columnist. Bill Bohm, who brought his singing angels here to entertain us. And finally, Bill Barrow, president of the Early Settlers. Clay Herrick also wrote about Cleveland history, most notably in a book on Cleveland landmarks which was published jointly in 1986 by the Early Settlers Association and the Cleveland Restoration Society. So it's especially appropriate this year that the Herrick Memorial Award go to the executive director of the Cleveland Restoration Society, Kathleen Crowther. Uh, to read from the award, the inscription on the award, Kathleen Hackman Crowther has been Executive Director President of the Cleveland Restoration Society since 1987. It has been named as one of the leading historic preservation organizations in the U.S. Its purpose is to revitalize and preserve diverse communities and to strengthen their economies. Kathleen has impressive credentials from various fields of study. She earned a bachelor's degree in art history and English from Case Western Reserve University. She continued her education in urban studies 
and received a master's degree from Cleveland State. In 2002, she was selected to be a fellow of the Center for Social Innovation at Stanford University's Graduate School of Business. The Society for Savings Building on Public Square, right in front of us there, was preserved thanks to the joint efforts of Kathleen and others. On the corner of Euclid Avenue and East 9th Street, the Cleveland Trust Building was saved from demolition and is now the downtown Heinen's Grocery Store. In addition, she helped preserve Lee Harvard and Lee Seville neighborhoods in Cleveland. Kathleen has always maintained a diverse board of directors the Cleveland Restoration Society is in the process of placing Ohio historical markers on the African American Civil Rights Trail, which is part of the National Park Service. Kathleen Hackman Crowther has preserved and added to the values and virtues of our great city. Kathleen, congratulations. just say a couple words. Um, thank you very much for this award. Uh, it's, it's really an honor and it kind of tickles me a little bit because it made me think of my, my own ancestors who came to the city of Cleveland and I'd like to honor them a little bit. Um, first of all, I knew Clay Herrick. I knew him really pretty well and he was such a gentleman of the old school. He was always making jokes, having, he always had puns. And uh, he was, he was just, they broke the mold after he was born. So I, I am honored that um, I have this award uh, in that family name, very esteemed Cleveland family, as you all know. And I'm also really honored to be among the other recipients, including Bill Barrow, who has helped us with the Lee Harvard uh, Cultural Heritage Project that is mentioned, um, and among those other people, such as the late uh, and great George Voinovich uh, and, and uh, John Sim Simperman, uh, Professor Van Tassel, and others. So I would just like to say that I guess I am really sort of a product of old settlers. I never thought of it that way. Old white settlers, by the way, you're old American settlers because we did have Native Americans here. Um, but my father, he would always, as I was interacting in Historic Preservation Cleveland, if my name was in the paper, he'd always say, Calf, can't you get your maiden name in there, Hackman, you know, so that's why I asked you to put it in on the plaque, uh, because his ancestors came to Cleveland in 1839, so I thought, well, that's pretty darn early, and uh, so his, uh, one of his great-grandfathers came from Germany and was a farmer, and then my own mother, my mother's uh, grandmother, my great-grandmother, came from Ireland at age 17 with a sewing machine a plaster statue of the Sacred Heart of Jesus, and uh, she came here because it was the second famine in Ireland, and there wasn't a guarantee of, a, of dinner that day, and her sister was to run the, the family store. So somebody had to leave, and she went to the Cove Harbor and left, never thinking she would ever come home again. She indeed did. But so it's, uh, thank you for this award because it's making me reflect on my own self. Sorry, <laughs> this happens, I'm 63. So, you know, I'm in that phase of thinking about uh, my own mortality. But everything I, I have uh, worked on has been a group effort. This is not just me. 
This is so many people, starting with Clay Herrick, Maxine Levin, Tom Campbell, John Simperman, so many other people. So I stand on their shoulders and um, we'll continue to work on this for a couple more years maybe. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, John. Thank you, Catherine. Uh, yes, the point is well raised about the early white settlers. The whole settlement of the Connecticut Western Reserve was done by people coming out of New England and buying land and investing in land and settling land. So that's the predominant focus has been on the ancestors of those original white settlers. However, uh, you know, we did have something of a Native American population here. Uh, the, also, we, there have been early on in our times uh, some African American presence, uh, George Peak, uh, escaped slave named Ben, and others. And I'd really like early settlers to find a way to talk more inclusively and diversely about the settlement of the Western Reserve and Cleveland, in this case, from all the peoples that were here. Uh, the southeast corner of the Western Reserve was primarily settled up out of uh, Pennsylvania. So the whole area around Warren and Youngstown is more of a Scots-Irish uh, flavor to it than the northern and western parts in Cleveland, which were Connecticut Yankees. So it's a more varied story than sometimes has been told, and I think it's one of our duties to tell that story and include more people. So uh, to that extent, anybody who wishes to join us in that event, uh, effect would be more than welcome. Uh, I would like to move on and have... Uh, Roy Leg, uh, who many of you may know from his many tours of the streams and, and watersheds and natural history of Cleveland, early settlements, and I have been involved in the Moses Cleveland Tree effort, uh, this year also involving the Forest City Working Group. So I've asked Roy to make a, a few comments here about early settlers' uh, role in the Moses Cleveland Tree effort. Roy? Dr. Roy Leg. Thank you, Bill. Uh, Mr. Kelly, I am uh, pleased that you mentioned that when Moses Cleveland arrived in July of 1796, he met a forest here at the mouth of the Cuyahoga. There were millions of trees, and uh, we have done our best to squander that resource over the last 200 or so years. And we uh, do get ideas to bring it back in various ways, uh, we are making progress. Still, we have lost a lot. In 1946, the Sesquicentennial Committee got the idea to designate Moses Cleveland trees. That would be trees that were standing in the forest 150 years before that, as Moses Cleveland arrived, and uh, they would designate 150 of them. That took place, and then in 1970, the Early Settlers Association uh, renewed the program and made an inventory of those 150 trees, found 92 of them standing, and over the next 20 years then, designated 120 more. The total is about 275 trees. And in the last couple of years, there has been a joint effort between the Early Settlers Association and the Forest City Working Group of Sustainable Cleveland. Representing the group here is Kathy Len of, uh, of Sustainable Cleveland. And uh, in those uh, couple of years, we have managed to get to most of these 270-some sites to find about 75 trees still standing. So we go from millions to 75 recognized. Certainly there are many hundreds of more out there. But uh, we still have trees that represent that forest that Moses Cleveland encountered. We have done our best to uh, interview, excuse me, to inventory the sites and this afternoon will be a celebration of the trees at the Forest City Brewery on Duck Island, Columbus Road. Four o'clock is when the festivities start. Hope you can join us there. Thank you. Thank you, Roy. Uh, trees don't last forever, even most of the trees. So we may have to, in future generations, find another particular hook to keep the idea of our forest alive. Uh, we have another statue right across the way here of Tom L. Johnson, 
Creed is the most famous mayor, so it may not be too early to start talking about Tom L. Johnson Creed. I don't know. Perhaps not. Uh, I have invited Dr. Chris Hunky here from Cleveland State University's uh, Civil Engineering Department. He's a surveyor himself, and he's going to kind of close with a little account of surveying on the Western Reserve. Uh, Dr. Hunky. Yeah, just a brief account from uh, an excerpt from the early uh, history of Cleveland, Ohio. This is from Tuesday, July 12th, 1796. In the, in the morning, we breakfast in our camp by the little brook and left the pack horse men to come on after us. After when we had proceeded about a mile, we sent back a hand to tell the men to go around the swamp with the horses. But the swamp continued and we ran on till night. Here being a hemlock ridge, we were in hopes of horses would be able to find us, but alas, we were obliged to make a little camp of the burrows, strike up a fire, and go to bed supperless. In the in daytime, I had to eat raspberries, gooseberries, winterberries, and wintergreens, and in the night, I began to grow sick in my stomach, and soon afterwards, vomit up everything that was in me. Mr. Pease, too, had a turn of the cramps, and in consequence of traveling all day, we arose early in the morning with meager looks and somewhat faint of wanting to eat and drink. But for where we camped had no water, but we had a little bit of rum. <laughs> the land uh, was very important, obviously, to late 18th, early 19th century. And getting surveyors out here to plot the land was a primary concern. Uh, the Mount Rushmore, thank you, the Mount Rushmore uh, has been described by surveyors as three surveyors and another guy. Uh, the three surveyors being Washington, Jefferson, and Lincoln, and the other guy being Roosevelt. So, uh, you know, it was a very important thing. This whole area we're standing on now, is, as Dr. Larrick said, is, was wilderness until they started dragging the chains out and marking out the dimensions of what became a nine and a half uh, acres public square and cleared it. So uh, I'd like to keep that in front of everybody because it wasn't an easy process to walk here from Connecticut uh, and then endure that hardship. A number of people died of malaria while they were out here in the field and they're buried in various places around the reserve, forgotten other except in Maine. So there, there's some hardships involved in this. So uh, with, uh, with uh, his account of their particular lunchtime break, uh, I think it's perhaps time to go find a more savory fare for ourselves. And I thank you all for coming. Uh, I do want to thank a couple of people here. Um, oh, and I should mention also, we had a ceremony on July 3rd at Pontiac, where the Moses Cleveland Party first arrived 225 years ago. And this Saturday, we're going to have another one down in Poland, where they marked the southeast corner of the Western Reserve uh, at that time. So I want to thank Rick Gospich for putting this together. Uh, all the members of our committee who worked on it, including Mary Louise Daly, uh, Leah Short from the mayor's office, Councilman Kevin Kelly, uh, the Western Reserve Society's color guard, uh, Anne at the Hyatt, who helped us, but we didn't go end up going there. Uh, all of you media folks who have come, I thank you very much for attending. Uh, and anybody else who I have forgotten, and of course, thank you, Kathleen, and uh, hope you enjoy your award. And, uh, we're honored to have you as one of the recipients. The list of others is up on our website at clevelandearlysettlers.org. Se uh, so thank you again, and we hope to see you all again next year. All right. Cake. Oh, yes, and we have cake, a birthday cake. So stick around, and we'll help you with that. Oh, that's it. It's all good. At the time it wasn't. Wow. <laughs>